After 33 days, much of the U.S. government is still closed. Hundreds of thousands of federal workers are still going unpaid, and the State of the Union address is now officially a casualty. President Trump had insisted on speaking before Congress as planned on January 29th. But House Speaker Nancy Pelosi informed him today that the House will not host the speech while the shutdown continues. They spoke at either end of Pennsylvania Avenue. We have said very clearly from the start, uh, when I wrote to him the second time to say, since government is shut down, we do not, let's, let's work together on a mutually agreeable date when we can welcome you to the Capitol to get rid of the State of the Union address. Uh, government is still shut down. I still make the offer. Uh, the State of the Union speech has been uh, canceled by Nancy Pelosi because she doesn't want to hear the truth. She doesn't want the American public to hear what's going on. And she's afraid of the truth. And the super-left Democrats, the radical Democrats, what's going on in that party is shocking. Amid the sparring over the State of the Union, there were faint signs of possible movement on ending the shutdown. Several top House Democrats suggested that they might offer up to $5.7 billion for border security, but not for a wall. The number three House Democrat, James Clyburn, said the money would pay for immigration judges, border agents, and technology. I think that it can be done uh, using uh, the figure uh, that the president has put on the table. If his $5.7 billion is about border security, then we see ourselves fulfilling that request, only doing it with what I like to call uh, using a smart wall. The president also vowed to do what he called an alternative event. He said he would have the details later. Meanwhile, hundreds of furloughed federal workers protested in a Senate office building today. Capitol Police arrested 11 people who attempted a sit-in outside Majority Leader Mitch McConnell's office. For insight into all of this, I'm joined now by our congressional correspondent, Lisa Desjardins, and our White House correspondent, Yamish Alcindor. So, Yamish, I'm going to start with you. What is the president saying right now about his position uh, on the shutdown and what the motivation is behind him to just keep pushing his position? Well, the president doesn't want to look weak, and he doesn't want to look like he's caving into Democrats. Today, he called Democrats dangerous and said that they're being radicalized and that they can't be trusted with border security. He also used what some people saw was lo as loaded language when talking about Sp Speaker Nancy Pelosi. He said that Nancy Pelosi is dominating Chuck Schumer. That would be, of course, Senator Chuck Schumer, and that, sh and that Chuck Schumer is a puppet of Nancy Pelosi. Now, we see the president kind of scrambling to, to decide how he's going to deal with Nancy Pelosi and his strategy for her. Usually, He's given people nicknames like Crooked Hillary for Hillary Clinton or Lion Ted for Ted Cruz. But in this case, he just said Nancy, who I like to call Nancy. The other thing to note is that the president is facing pressure from his own conservative base. There, were a, there was a group of conservatives who met today with the president at the White House, and one of them was, a, was the president of the Heritage Foundation. Her husband is actually one of the people that's furloughed, a furlough worker. Now, this is a large think tank based in Washington, D.C. And she told me, even though I want my husband to go back to work, I want the president not to blame link. So, Lisa, turning to you and the Democrats, they seem to be digging in. What is their mindset? What, what's their thinking? That's right. Judy, talking to Democrats today, I have to say they seemed more united than last week, and not just portraying unity, but actually, when they talk off the record, really more united. One reason is because moderates are happy that Democrats are preparing an offer. They felt like Democrats weren't coming to the table and needed to do that. Now, progressives are happy because they like seeing Nancy Pelosi stand up to the president this way. I heard a lot of progressive, mention, progressive Democrats mention things like, we are a co-equal branch of government, and Speaker Pelosi should lay down her, you know, a line on the State of the Union. Now, Republicans, however, they think the State of the Union gambit here is a political problem ahead, but we'll see how that all rolls out. And meanwhile, I want to talk about some strange logistical questions here. Judy, preparations for State of the Union should be underway now. Production trucks were supposed to get to the Capitol tomorrow, and I'm told that that is not going to happen, uh, that there's no preparations that will be made for any kind of speech. Also, it's important to know that the president does have the right to enter the House chamber. He has floor privileges.
privileges. He can walk in the chamber almost any time that he likes. However, he does not have the ability to speak from the podium or dais without the House extending that invitation. Another question, how about the Senate chamber? I've been asking Senator McConnell's office, the Republican leader there, if that is a possibility. I don't have a firm answer yet. But we know that in the past, nine U.S. presidents have spoken just in the U.S. Senate chamber. Huh, fascinating. So, Yamish, what is the president, what's the White House saying the president's going to do if he can't do this speech in the traditional manner in, in the House of Representatives? Well, President Trump is weighing his options and trying to figure out where he wants to give the State of the Union speech. The president himself said that the Capitol is basically off the table and that he's now looking at other ways to do this. It's important to note that the president wants to deliver this speech because polls show that his approval ratings are really taking a hit because of the shutdown. One poll that was that was released today in part by the Associated Press shows that his approval rating is at 34 percent and that people don't agree with a lot of the, the, the idea that he's shutting down the government for this wall. The other thing that note, I ran into Vice President Mike Pence today at the White House. I, I put the question to him, what do you think of Nancy Pelosi's stance? What's the president going to do at the State of the Union? All he would say is the president has a, con a constitutional duty to deliver the State of the Union, and he will be doing that. So we'll just have to see where he ends up doing that speech. So, Yamish, you're running into the vice president. It's a good way to get information. Uh, Lisa, back to you. Yeah. We, we were reporting on that uh, uh, protest of government uh, federal employees at the Capitol today. You were there talking to them. What are they saying? Right. Now, I want to say this protest that I went to was one of the more organized and dignified protests that I've been to recently. It was 33 minutes of silence, one for each day of the shutdown, and then some very limited chanting. I spoke to many of the workers, federal workers who were there, workers from USDA, from FEMA, uh, from many agencies. Uh, they say for now they've used mostly savings to pay for their mortgage bills. Many of them just paid mortgage bills using savings or borrowing money. And I want to highlight one story. I spoke to one worker from Denver, Judy. This is a FEMA worker who used airline miles to travel here just for this protest today. He told me he had been a Republican in years past. He recently switched to independent, and he said, quote, I've never been engaged in politics before. This has charged me up. This is a problem for me personally and for my agency and the emergency functions that it holds. So it was really an interesting crowd full of people. Clearly, the shutdown having far-reaching impact. Lisa, thank you very much. Yamish, thank you.